Case at 12 News. First with News Star 12. First with Doppler Storm Scan. Serving San Antonio and South Texas. Case at 12 News tonight with Bob Salter, Mike Lozano, and Paul Alexander. Now, Case at 12 News tonight. No one ever saw it coming. On the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, the storm hit without warning and the losses were heavy. Meantime, in the Gulf, another storm is churning. The question is, where will it strike? Good evening. It was a day of turbulence on the stock market and in the weather. In a moment, we'll have the story of the second worst day in Wall Street's history. But first, in the Gulf of Mexico, where Tropical Storm Jerry is flexing its muscle and building steam, in just a matter of hours, it's gone from a tropical depression to a tropical storm with winds of 70 miles an hour bordering on hurricane strength. Jerry's tracking to the north, and while it is hundreds of miles from landfall in Texas, it is contributing to a coastal flood warning, which is in effect in Texas. Mike Lozano is here with a look at where Jerry's going and what forces are combining to cause the surging tides on the coast right now, Mike. Well, Bob, actually, it's a combination of several things, some of which have nothing to do with the hurricane. The position of the sun, the moon, and the earth at this particular time of the year is combined to give a rare combination of very, very high tides. They normally call them spring tides, and that takes the, the tide normally about three feet above the average sea level where it would normally be. And then you have six-foot swells coming off a of tropical storm, Jerry, which is way out in the Gulf of Mexico, comparatively speaking, to Texas. That's combining to have an effect on the Texas beaches of the possibility of coastal flooding. So if you were planning on going to the coast, doing some swimming, don't think about it too long because they're going to have severe riptides out here. And that, of course, could drag you right out to sea. You'd wind up here in the eye of Jerry. We'll tell you more about Jerry later on. Well, predicting the exact landfall of a hurricane or a tropical storm is very difficult, but as Mike's maps indicate, New Orleans is the most likely target of Jerry at this time. And reporter Ken Jones from our affiliate in New Orleans is on Grand Isle, Louisiana, just south of the city with the latest. Ken? Bob, the winds are picking up quite a bit out here in Grand Isle, as well as the waves, as you can see behind me here. However, a few people have boarded and taped up their homes this evening, though I expect more of that will occur overnight. Tomorrow morning, Grand Isle city leaders are to meet and decide about evacuation for the island. I'm told that will probably happen soon after that meeting. What might also complicate matters out here is a full autumn moon, which is expected to pull tides about one to one and a half feet higher than normal. Um, but as far as Mayor Andy Valance is concerned, they've been through this before, and they can handle it today as well. So once again, not much is going on this evening, though that should change overnight and as the storm picks up, as you can well see behind me here. Back to you, Bob. Ken Jones in New Orleans. It is Friday the 13th today, and nowhere was it more unlucky than Wall Street. Stock prices plunged almost 200 points today, the second biggest drop in the history of the market. Started this afternoon with news that trading had halted on United Airlines because a labor management group was unable to raise the money to finance an almost $7 billion takeover of the airline. Traders who had been riding the crest of similar junk bond takeovers decided that signaled the end to all the takeovers. So they sold everything they could, and prices plunged. 50 points in minutes, then 100, and closing down 190 points. Much of the selling was triggered by computer programs that dumped huge blocks of stock. Many, including this broker, feel the plunge was artificial and will be short-lived. Any sell-off that we have right now is definitely going to be temporary. It's not the same kind of fundamental background that would cause a bear market or even uh, a crash like we had in 87. Coincidentally, today's nosedive comes almost two years to the day after the 1987 crash when the market cratered more than 500 points, the biggest loss in exchange history. In local news, one of the brothers accused in the shooting death of a San Antonio policeman was in court today, but Henry David Hernandez was not on trial. Instead, his lawyers presented 44 pretrial motions, the most unique. Hernandez wants to visit the scene of the alleged murder in an effort to develop a defense strategy with his attorney, Hernandez, and his brother, Julian are accused in the shooting death of patrolman Gary Williams in March. They're expected to go on trial in January. They knew they were in trouble, that their jet was about to go down. Still, the two crew members aboard a Phantom F-4 were able to eject before its crash in West Texas earlier today. Despite their mid-air escape, the accident claimed the life of one crew member. The reason was a faulty parachute. The crash happened this morning near the small town of Bangs. The crew on a training flight out of Bergstrom Air Force Base in Austin. The second member of the crew was not injured and Air Force investigation continues. 
In what amounts to a cruel turnabout, a local health care worker may need health care for the rest of her life because of an accident on the job. A San Antonio woman is living with the dread she may have contracted AIDS while handling lab needles. Angela Virville has the story. I felt real dirty, you know, when I uh, got stuck by the needle. The stigma of AIDS still runs high. That's why this San Antonio health care worker who accidentally stuck herself with a needle from an AIDS patient wanted to remain anonymous. It really did upset me. Like many health care workers, she handles needles all day long, drawing blood, then capping the needle before tossing it out. One day, her aim was bad, and she stuck herself in the finger. A routine test of the patient's blood revealed what she dreaded most. It was positive. The patient had AIDS. Dr. Luis Cisneros, an infectious disease specialist who treats AIDS patients, says accidental sticks are not unusual. What I have had so far this year, a couple of doctors, and all the time I have nurses, uh, this morning I had somebody from EMS who stuck himself. Because of the frequency of the accident, Burroughs Welcome, the company that makes the AIDS drug AZT, has set up a special hotline number. By dialing 1-800-HIV-STICK, Healthcare workers can get immediate information and advice. The information is encouraging. The odds of getting AIDS from a needle stick are quite small. Dr. Cisnero says if he ever got stuck with an HIV-positive needle, he would take AZT, and that's what he recommends when asked. As soon as you stick yourself. The healthcare worker re-interviewed for this story hasn't had herself tested yet. I'm more afraid of getting tested because I'm afraid that it's going to be positive. Even though she dreads the worst, the odds are actually in her favor. A 1 in 150 chance that she'll get the AIDS virus. She says even that's too much. Angela Vierville, KSAT 12 News. More ahead on KSAT 12 News tonight. New and bizarre tales concerning suspected spy Felix Block. We will tell you about accusations from a former prostitute. San Antonio's Archbishop completes 10 years of service, a special anniversary for Patrick Flores, and ABC's commitment to literacy, how a television network has helped shape the national agenda. Stay tuned. In the past year, over 1,700 companies have moved to Texas Commerce, and now they're seeing a lot more of their bankers, hearing better ideas, getting better answers, at Texas Commerce, we believe we wouldn't know our business if we didn't get to know yours. Is that kind of thinking worth changing banks for? Just ask the companies that have done it. There's another $60,000 in Wingo cash up for grabs this week, South Texas. Just look in Sunday's Express News for your new Wingo game card. In the star, the torment of Tammy Baker as her cheating husband flaunted his lovers, women and men. And drove her to drugs and alcohol. This and lots, lots more, cause... Didn't know it wouldn't be a Sunday without the Express News. Just look in Tales of prostitution and masochistic sex are giving federal investigators a new and disturbing view of suspected spy Felix Bloch. Bloch is the former U.S. diplomat who is suspected of passing secrets to the Soviets. He's not been formally accused, but a federal grand jury is looking into the case and recently interrogated this woman. She calls herself Tina. She is a former prostitute in Vienna and says she had a paid sexual relationship with Felix Bloch over the last seven years while he was stationed there. She told the grand jury Block would visit at least once a week to be, as she put it, humiliated and beaten. Having paid the prostitute more than $10,000 a year, investigators think Block may have been lured into selling secrets to the Soviets to come up with the money. Also, Tina told the grand jury that she never heard anything about the suspected espionage. Tonight, the experts are putting together a center for disease control for computer viruses. This after scattered reports of so-called viral outbreaks in as many as 50 computer systems worldwide. Computer Vandals announced they were activating their data bank destroying viruses at midnight last night. Computer whizzes have now established headquarters to centralize information on the outbreaks, which so far are not a cause for great alarm. With a new computer on board, it looks like the space shuttle Atlantis will be able to lift off this Tuesday. The shuttle's been grounded because of a malfunctioning main engine computer. Now, while the technical problems appear to be solved, 
Environmentalists say they are going back to court to block the mission, which will deploy a nuclear-powered space probe. Environmentalists say the radioactive payload would contaminate Florida if there were an accident on launch. For a full decade now, he has led the Catholic Church in San Antonio and much of Texas. And for Archbishop Patrick Flotis, it has been a labor of love. This morning, friends and followers honored Flotis at a breakfast planned for his 10th anniversary as Archbishop of the San Antonio Archdiocese. Later in the day, he anointed members of the church who were sick or elderly, and during the ceremony, the Archbishop placed a small amount of olive oil on the forehead or palm of the faithful in attendance. Television networks have not been afraid to tackle tough subjects like drugs, teen suicide, or child abuse, but like many students, they shied away from their weakest area, programming to encourage people to learn to read. Five years ago, that changed at ABC, and today the man behind the Project Literacy message came to San Antonio. Our Kathy Teague was there. Valley. Dang. No. Look again. V-I-L. Village. Right. Literacy efforts like Project Learn to Read are now a part of the national agenda. But it wasn't long ago that a speaker like former ABC Communications President James Duffy would have stayed away from talking about literacy for fear of boring his audience. It was a yawn ten years ago. People simply didn't pay any attention to the fact that we need basic skills. But we're into a high-tech world now, and we do. The Bush administration is talking about education and literacy and service and volunteering. But now groups like Women in Communications are recognizing the problem. Geraldine climbed to the very top of the cheese. Reading is a skill more than 25 million Americans don't possess. Yet it is an issue a television network originally found hard to sell. We talked about a campaign on illiteracy over a long period of time. There was some skepticism, but there had been some experience and people were willing to go along. Duffy says now Project Literacy U.S., which began as a public service campaign, has the network's full commitment. In the audience were examples of a local commitment. Students involved in the San Antonio Youth Literacy Program. I feel that our program helps the students because they, they feel more comfortable with people the same age helping them instead of, you know, someone older than them just telling them what to do. And that's what Duffy says it will take. Students helping students businesses helping schools partnerships he says that must be formed or else the united states could turn into a second-rate nation full of non-breeders kathy teague ksat 12 news it is an effort to literally bail out farmers in drought-stricken south texas a convoy of trucks filled with hay donated by other farmers passed through austin and san antonio on its way to goliad today there the donated hay will be distributed to needy farmers Texas Farm Bureau organized the hay lift in response to requests for assistance from South Texas farmers. Maybe we'll get a little rain out of all of well, this you know, storm it, stuff we've been talking it's about. It's doubtful that Jerry itself will give us any rain, but what we're not expecting is a cold front coming in. That is due here probably on late Monday night. That'll set off some rain if Jerry doesn't drain all the moisture out of the air. Oh, I hadn't so, even thought about that. Yeah, he could take it all over there towards that's Louisiana. That's right, that's right. And if you're planning on going to the coast, Forget about it. Swimming is terrible. If you want to look at the waves, fine. But don't, don't go swimming. We'll be back. For years, we've told you about Justin Roper's being only $69.95. This is Bobby Joe at the Crosso Western Store reminding you Justin has been a standard of quality for over 100 years. And out at the Crosso Western Store, we still have men's and ladies Justin Roper's in all the colors, and they're still only $69.95 every day. But now there's a new generation of Justin, Justin Juniors, only $39.99. Also, there's lace-up Justin Ropers for men's and ladies, only $95. Cross Old Western Store, corner Babcock and Hillcrest, where we stack them deep and sell them cheap. Stop and go, stop and go. Come on, go, go.
What a difference the night makes. Humidity, we got it. Clear skies, 82 degrees. It feels like 84 degrees out there because the dew point is at 63 degrees, well into the discomfort range. Relative humidity, 53%. Winds out of the south at 3 miles per hour. The pressure's falling 30.01 inches of mercury. This morning's low is 59. Afternoon high was 86. Rain falls zero. We're now 6 and 71 hundredths of an inch below normal for this time of the year. The nose count, molds are heavy, ragweeds medium, cedar elm just barely in the light category. Add them up together and they're terrible. What's not terrible is the aquifer, only dropped one-tenth of a foot, 633.6 feet above sea level. Let's get right down to the maps and find out exactly what's going on with Tropical Storm Jerry. That would really be bad, bad joke if we had something else called Tom over in the Pacific, but we don't. It's the only game in town, right now located at 24.5 north, 93.6 west, top winds. 70 miles per hour, just a couple of miles shy of becoming a full-fledged hurricane. That likely will not happen until the wee hours of the morning, possibly as late as sunup. It's moving to the north at 13 miles per hour. Now, given its position right over here, moving due north now puts it into the Louisiana area. So what is the area now being covered by a hurricane watch? Extends all the way from Port Arthur over to the mouth of the Mississippi. All of this area under a hurricane watch, but we do have an additional problem right along the Gulf Coast. There's an unusual alignment of the sun, moon, earth that's creating very, very high tides. Now, we're calling them astronomical tides due to the fact that it's astronomical causes, not that they're astronomically large. They are about three feet above normal. Then you add to it the waves and swells generated by Jerry. You're going to have a big problem on the coast due to riptides. Don't go swimming. Don't try to go surfing because if you get caught in the wrong one, it'll just yank you right out to sea. You're liable to wind up with a front row seat for Tropical Storm Jerry. You don't want that. National map right now, high pressure, pretty much the agent that's bringing in a lot of moisture. However, here's the problem. This front right here is going to take a nosedive through us, coming in late, probably on Tuesday. That's the best shot we've got at it. Hitting the moist, unstable air will set off thunderstorm activity. But at the same time, this thing is moving due north. Its counterclockwise circulation may dry out our air just as the cold front gets here. We'll get cool, we'll get dry but we won't have any thunderstorms, so keep your fingers crossed as a matter of timing. Here's a look at Jerry. This is almost 20 hours worth of satellite imagery to show you exactly what's been going on. Now, originally, this thing starts heading up this way towards the Texas coast, scared the heck out of a lot of people over in Houston, had a call from a uh, Ford executive that wanted to shut down their computer center, but now this thing is taking a northeasterly turn. It looks like New Orleans is the most probable target that by the next 12 hours, it'll be over here in Meridian, Mississippi. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Gun Oldsmobile's got the 1990s in stock and priced to knock you off your feet. For just $16,245, you can own the redesigned and all-new 1990 Luxury 88 Royale Sedan. Or for only $14,950, you can take off in the new hot Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme 4 door. Gun not only has the best prices on new 90s, but Gun also offers you the Oldsmobile Edge. Guaranteed satisfaction, bumper to bumper plus warranty, and 24-hour roadside assistance. Only at Gun Oldsmobile. Can you believe it? It's 0% days at Montgomery Ward. Buy now and there are no payments, no interest, and no billing until 1990. That's on furniture, electronics, appliances, tires, and fine jewelry. All the brands you believe in, low prices every day, and we guarantee we'll match any store's advertised sale price with no payments and no interest until 1990. Believe it. Montgomery Ward, the brand name store. Here's the forecast for tonight. Partly cloudy, we'll have increasing late night cloudiness, plus we'll have a good chance of pre-dawn and early morning fog. Do be careful, especially if you're still tempted to go down towards the coast. The low 70 degrees, quite a comparison to last night's 59. Then tomorrow, morning fog. Otherwise, it'll be partly cloudy. There's a chance of isolated, mostly coastal plain thunderstorms. We may get lucky. Some may sneak in here. Not too much of a chance of that. High 88 degrees. The extended forecast looks like this. Sunday and Monday, partly cloudy. Tuesday, that's when that front comes through. Depending on the timing, we could have some scattered, heavy thunderstorms that evening. And then Wednesday, windy and cooler. 
Or it could just get real or windy and we may get nothing out it. get windy and cool and we get no rain. That's right. Jerry, going to be a hurricane before the night's out? It looks like it'll wait until probably the next reading, which is at 3 o'clock in the morning. If not, next shot is 6 o'clock. When they're tropical storms, they don't get checked very often. And, and they really tend to intensify during the afternoon hours, don't that's they? That's correct. The solar heating and the sun's, you know, uh, rays heat up the ocean. Yeah, that's what it runs on. Have heat. a great weekend. You too. Stay out of those riptides. <laughs> Cartoon characters may last forever, but unfortunately their creators do not. Cartoonist Jay Ward, who gave us Bullwinkle the moose and Rocky the flying squirrel has died. The 69 year old Ward was suffering from kidney cancer. His characters were among the first to appear on primetime television. And the more you watch that series, the more you see that it was really for adults all along. Not a kid's cartoon show. I think uh, the best cartoon of all time. It really is. One of my favorites. I watch them all the time. You watch football all the time. All the time. And that's okay with me. The Marshall Rams very much for real. You know, we, we've been wondering just how good a team they were in District 35A. They've been involved in a lot of close ball games, but tonight at Northside, they beat Clark. Let's go out live to Cordell Patrick. It was a very good ball game also between the Marshall Rams and the Clark Cougars. We'll tell you what happened out here at Northside. Also, the complete high school football picture for this Friday. We'll do that when we come back. Here's everything that's on sale this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Highland Superstores. Now watch real close and you'll see an RCA VHS video recorder with remote for just $212. Did you see it? You'll also see a JVC programmable CD player with four times over sampling for just $177. This is everything that's on sale Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Highland. And now here's everything that's not on sale. So if you get the idea that everything's on sale now through Saturday at Highland, you get the idea. The fastest way to win money is in the San Antonio Light. It's Loteria, and it's very easy to win. Get a Sunday Light and find your Loteria Strike It Rich game card. Now, grab your card and look for these symbols in the light every day. Match them up. There are six ways to win a total of $25,000 in cash every week. And with Loteria and Strike It Rich, it's $50,000 every week. Over 1,800 winners have already shared more than three quarters of a million dollars this year. That's more winners and more money than any other game. Get your card this Sunday only in the light. Like a mother and a child Always Like a headshake and a smile Some things never change Always Just as scouts pledge to always help others Walmart pledges to always keep a generous supply of the brands you trust in stock Walmart Always the low price on the brands you trust Always it's the DQ Country Basket. Four pure beef fingers, fried gravy, and Texas toast. A basket full of good eating only at Dairy Queen. The helmet was different, the jersey was different, but there was no mistaking the physique and the stride on this athlete at the Minnesota Vikings practice today. Number 34 in your program is Herschel Walker, who worked out with the Vikes for the first time this afternoon. Herschel ought to feel welcome. The Vikings traded five players and up to seven draft choices to acquire Walker from the Cowboys yesterday. Last Sunday, Herschel faced the Green Bay Packer defense as a member of the Cowboys. This weekend, he'll go up against the Pack again, this time, of course, as a member of the Vikings. While Walker began practicing with the Vikes, the players for whom he was traded arrived in Dallas today. Running back Darren Nelson, linebackers David Howard and Jesse Solomon, defensive end Alex Stewart and cornerback Isaac Holt are all now Cowboys. In addition to those five players, the Cowboys also received the Vikings' first round pick in 1992 and up to six other conditional draft picks. Tonight marks the halfway point in the high school football regular season. At Northside, a critical game in District 35A as the Clark Cougars took on the Marshall Rams. Each team unbeaten in district play going in. Cordell Patrick witnessed that game from whistle to gun and joins us now for this live report. And the Rams, Cordell, got it done. Finally, they have the number for the Clark Cougars. Clark has done a job on Marshall throughout the years. Not tonight. Let's go to the highlights where we can show you what transpired here at Northside Stadium. And, of course, Marshall looking to trash the Clark Cougars tonight. Now, watch this. Anthony Holmes, he's going to go right up the middle. He'll change directions. He's on his way, folks. He's gone. Say bye-bye. 72-yard touchdown run. 7-0 Marshall. Anthony Holmes with the nice run. Now, Josh LaRocca is the quarterback for the Clark Cougars. Watch him as he drops back to pass. He'll look to his left side. This pass will be intercepted by Tim Woods, and he is going down the sidelines, but he'll be stopped by Keith Brown at about the 10-yard line of the Cougars. That sets up this touchdown run. Two plays later, V.J. Villarreal, a one-yard touchdown run. Marshall out to a 14-0 lead. Clark scores a touchdown late in the contest. Bill Shields with a three-yard touchdown. Watch this, the controversial touchdown. 
Marshall said he didn't get over the goal line. It's real close, but he has given the touchdown 14 to 13. Two point conversion for Clark coming up. This could give them the lead for the first time of the night. But Bill Shields is blasted by Tim Woods. And there's your final right there. Marshall with the 21 to 13 win over Clark. And Anthony Holmes had another 56-yard touchdown later on in the contest. Once again, a big win for Marshall tonight, Paul. All right, so Marshall 5-1 and one overall and unbeaten at 2-0 and oh in district play. Thanks a lot. At Alamo Stadium, Jefferson coach Marshall Fleener was hoping that Friday the 13th would prove to be unlucky for the Sam Houston Cherokees. After being upset by Lanier last week, Jeff had to have a win to stay in the chase in District 28-5A. Mustangs in white score first, first drive of the night. Eddie Weddington covers the final five yards of a 76-yard drive, 7-0 Jeff. But these Cherokees are undefeated for a reason. Houston quarterback Desi Griffin on the throw to Jeremiah Johnson. Now watch closely. The reception is juggled, but it's ruled a catch at the Jeff 13. The ball comes out, but the official says, yes, he had control, and the ball is down. That set up this scoring jaunt by star back Dominic Cameron. What a talent he is. Nice option pitch by Griffin, and the score is now tied at 7. We move to the third quarter. Houston up 14-7, but that man, Weddington, gets loose up the sideline for a 40-yard gain. Eddie Weddington really one of the premier running backs in all of San Antonio this year. That leads to the Jefferson score as quarterback Larry Peachy hits Jermaine Boone from 15 yards out. We're even again at 14. Boone is one very courageous receiver. I've been very impressed with him this year. This game pivoted on a mistake. Peachy on the pitch to Weddington, but it's fumbled, and Houston recovers in midfield. The Cherokees then take advantage of that Jeff miscue. Griffin on the keep for 38 yards in the winning touchdown. To watch this. Watch him cut it back. The safety gets nothing but air, and Desi Griffin is gone. Sam Houston added yet another touchdown. Final score as the Cherokees remain unbeaten on the year at 6-0. Houston wins it 28-14 over Jeff. Other high school scores, Judson still unbeaten. They beat Lee 48 to nothing. Roosevelt 6-0 after a 28-0 victory over San Marcos. Taft over Del Rio in a close one, 20-16 uh, the final there. Seguin deals McCullum its very first loss of the year as the Matadors win 48-13. Laredo Nixon in a wild, wild football game holds on to beat Harlandale by a score of 29-26. Highlands over Brackenridge 41-6. Laredo United shut out South San 18-0. Southwest over Laredo Martin, 37-6 in that game. George Collins, 21 carries, 292 yards rushing. Jay blanked Eagle Pass, 49-0. Smithson Valley over Alamo Heights, 18-17. Smithson Valley, by the way, had trailed 10-0 at halftime of that ballgame. Nice comeback. West Campus over Kennedy, 17-6. Pleasanton shut out Edgewood, 31-0. Bernie over Clemens, 14-7. And kind of a strange-looking score here as Randolph beats Floresville, 14-5. Remember that University of Houston head coach Jack Pardee was an All-American at Texas A&M, so Pardee knows what his Cougars will be up against tomorrow when they face the Aggies in College Station. At practice this week, Pardee has been playing the Aggie war hymn at ear-splitting levels and has even had equipment managers impersonating Aggie yell leaders. Now, don't feel too sorry for the visiting Cougs. They're undefeated and are averaging 59 points per game offensively while allowing only six. Now, in addition to that Houston A&M game, other Southwest Conference matchups include Arkansas versus Texas Tech, SMU versus Baylor, and TCU at Rice, and of course in Dallas, the annual intersectional pyrotechnics between Texas and Oklahoma. When we come back, the Spurs get ready for tomorrow night's preseason opener. The future of time is revolutionary. With computerized IQ, intelligent quartz, only from Seiko. Now just two hands simply perform four separate functions. Precision quartz time, an alarm, a countdown timer, a stopwatch. It's revolutionary. The future of time is in our hands. Seiko. Available at most Zales stores. It's Weberg's huge 48-hour sale. 48 hours to beat the clock. Phenomenal savings on all kinds of furniture. From America's most famous name. Like this popular pub back sofa with wood trim and brass accents, now just $388. This contemporary four-piece oak finished bedroom sale priced at just $488. Buy with no money down and with nothing to pay for three full months. Don't miss the markdown. Don't miss the countdown. Now through Sunday. 48 hours to beat the clock. Weberg's huge 48-hour sale. Spurs fans will get their first competitive look at the new-look Spurs tomorrow night at the arena. San Antonio will host the Milwaukee Bucks in the preseason opener. The game, of course, marks the return to the arena of Alvin Robertson and Cadillac Anderson, who were traded to Milwaukee during the offseason in exchange for Terry Cummings. 
Spurs top draft choice Sean Elliott is on top of the world after signing that five-year, $9 million contract yesterday in Game 1 of the World Series. The Fall Classic coming up tomorrow night in Oakland. Can't wait. I notice Sean's wearing that leg brace. Is that anything to worry hmm. about, or he just does that as a matter of habit? Totally psychological. That injury dates back to his junior year in high school. There's nothing wrong with him, but it's kind of like Lee Trevino's Band-Aid. He just feels better when he has it. I think I'm going to start wearing one if it'll help my income <laughs> like that. Yeah. Thank you. You have a good weekend. We'll be back with a little uh, Friday the 13th story after this. Friday night, Chili's Grillin' Bar. Look who sprung loose from the offspring. By the way, did you tell the kids where to find us? They tortured me, but I wouldn't talk. Um, Tonight is dinner for two in Chili's Saucy Baby Back Ribs. Everybody gets a babysitter. Oh, uh, Robbie Buck? Robbie Buck is mm -hmm. 10 years old. Mm -hmm. A night alone, some time to relax. Maybe I should call home. No, it's okay. No. Yeah, what can go wrong? Yeah. He's big for his age. He's tall. Don't play yourselves to his chilies. Here's a quarter. Thanks. No please. The fabulous 1990 Ford cars and trucks are arriving every day here at Gillespie Ford. Plus, we still have carryover 89s. Our goal is to sell every one of them from 300 to 800 less than any other dealer for the same exact model. That's why a builder from San Angelo, 120 miles away, drove all the way to Gillespie to buy a new Escort. It's why a police officer from Laredo drove 150 miles to buy a Gillespie Ford. It's worth the trip to Gillespie Ford. Cars and trucks, Jeeps and Eagles, and used car center. Centrally located in the 2300 block of Broadway. Listen to the scissors. USDA inspected boneless beef whole ribeye, two ninety nine a pound. Limit two with ten dollar additional purchase. Classic Coke, six pack, twelve ounce cans, a dollar fifty nine. Kroger gives you princely savings on admission to the Texas Renaissance Festival. Finally tonight, under what else? Friday the thirteenth. This is, after all, a day to indulge superstition, and some people didn't find it all that funny. 